Makeup recognizes the dichotomy that exists between consumers and their knowledge of the processes and impacts of material acquisition. This disconnect has led to a growing desire for more, for new products and for materials based on their assumed societal value, where the economic value is what is most considered, ultimately leading to a hardened reliance on extractive industries, allowing existing and emerging industries to continue to strive and pose significant threats on our environment, often irreversible in the quest for more. In order to achieve a permanent and successful shift, an array of changes will need to be made across a range of sectors to ultimately benefit society, our economy and our environment. The breakup seeks to play a role in this shift by acting as a more immediate implementation that can occur. The breakup will take form as a smartphone app and physical printed guideline that seeks to explore two key aspects of the construction industry, demolition and specification, where consumers are able to utilise these outcomes on site before demolition occurs and during the design phases to better their understanding of the true costs of material obtainment during material specification processes for projects. Before we specify new materials for a project, we must first understand what is already existing on site. Existing buildings host a wealth of different materials that already have had so much invested into them. Yet common demolition practices often destroy these materials and send them to waste. In 2004 to 2005, Australia generated 15.1 million tonnes of construction and demolition waste. The following year, over 16.3 million tonnes was generated, and 10 years later, in 2017, this rose to 20.4 million tonnes. However, 2017 also saw the introduction of China's national sword policy, which restricted waste imports, forbidding the importation of 24 waste types and placing strict contamination limits on others. In 2017, Australia exported 1.3 million tonnes of recycled materials to China, so these new regulations pose a significant threat as to what is done with Australia's waste. Encouraging government structures to develop a market for the treatment of recycled wastes and infrastructures that enable alternative waste treatment options. As such, the material reuse section of the breakup seeks to offer an immediate change presenting a range of generative ideas for materials often found in buildings and how they can be reused in contemporary building applications through a change in demolition practices. Additionally, these materials will be diverted from waste and landfill sites that are often ill-equipped to handle co-mingled and contaminated wastes, whilst lessening the need for new materials and in turn, reducing our reliance on the extractive processes. Doing so through a visual diagram that splits the generative ideas into four key categories. Incorporate, furniture and accessories, design, and recycle. The typically hidden, unknown, or ignored aspects of material obtainment will be explored and rated in this section of the framework. Seeking to highlight the vast involvement of varying industries and elements in the creation of materials and their delivery to site whilst also offering viable and sustainable alternatives that allow the opportunity for comparisons to be made. By doing so, the breakup will grant consumers with further knowledge that seeks to expand their considerations beyond the economic value of a product and include the true costs of material obtainment, leading to more environmentally conscious decisions that ultimately reduce our reliance on the extractive industries that produce them. The diagram serves as a visual representation of researched and assessed information to generate a quantitative analysis of a range of materials. Simplifying the array of processes into a simple rating system offers the opportunity for the information to be more easily digested by viewers and in turn make more well-informed decisions. The rating system analyzes and attributes a rating between negative 5 and positive five to each subcategory based on factors such as intensity of process and ability for reuse or biodegradation. The subcategory ratings are then totaled to form a percentage rating for the overall category. The overall percentage across the seven overall categories is then used as the overarching percentage rating, where the lower the percentage rating, 
the more environmentally friendly the product is. By influencing and offering the opportunity for consumers to better educate themselves in a simplified manner of the complexities involved, our desires for extractive industries is lessened. Instead, our desires for the development of more environmentally conscious materials, products and decisions is heightened. By recognising the plethora of different aspects that is absorbed by the final product, the true value of a product is heightened. Doing so seeks to have highlighted the importance of material reuse and the way in which current demolition practices often destroy and put to waste materials that have had so much invested into them, yet still have so much more to give. Ultimately, by allowing and providing ways in which we can reduce our human reliance on extractive industries, we are changing the way we see and understand the world, granting us the privilege to better the way we construct it in the future in a manner that seeks to minimise our often irreversible human footprint on the earth, creating a more livable environment that will not only benefit mankind, but the array of ecosystems we share the earth with.